This video is to help with SOP3 and I'm going to cover how you annotate and label spectra inside Davis. To begin with, I'm going to recreate the butterfly plot. Remember this was created in a previous video. See how it only takes a couple of minutes to create graphics like this. So here is the butterfly view of the positive and negative mode mass spectra. Now you must assign the peaks and label them appropriately. How to zoom into the spectra. Use this magnifying glass tool. You can click and drag to zoom into a region of the spectrum. Use this tool to zoom back out again. Finding peak masses and intensities. So we want to find the peak masses and intensities of this set of peaks. To read data from the graph, use this crosshair tool. Just hover the cursor over a point and the x and y coordinates are displayed. You can then note these values in Excel, so you can use them for peak assignment purposes. How can you label peaks so you can refer to them in text associated with a spectrum? Use the annotation tool for this. Add the label on the active layer.
I've called this peak P1 because it's the first positive mode peak I will refer to. You can use whatever labelling scheme you like. Add other labels the same way, however many you need. Adding other shapes, like arrows. This can be useful if you need to label a group of peaks that are close together. You can also highlight mass differences. These can be important in explaining a series of peaks in a spectrum that may have consistent mass differences. Double click on the arrow to open its properties. Check the arrow at start to make it a double headed arrow. How can we copy this arrow to show a series of similarly spaced peaks? To copy an arrow, right click on it and select copy. To paste an arrow, type Ctrl V both at once. So, here are four similarly spaced peaks. How can we line the arrows up? Double click on each arrow in turn. Go to the Geometry tab. These two Y values give the vertical position of both ends of the arrow. Make these the same for every arrow you want to align. All the arrows are now aligned, and so now we must label them. We might want to get rid of the label border and make the font bigger, so here's how to do that. You will want to specify how many mass units are between each peak, not just delta mz, but I'm not giving you the answer here. Then you can copy and paste the label to label the other arrows. By labelling peaks like this, you can make it clear how they were assigned as a group.